Good morning, everyone. This is Daniel, the Associate Minister here at Grace Church. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. I pray that you are doing well this morning as always. I have a few announcements to make here as we get started. First is that we do have our food distribution on the 22nd of December. We have over 30 families already signed up to receive Christmas baskets, so I ask, please pray. Uh, we hope that we are going to be able to share Jesus with uh, those that uh, are coming out and that so pray for us that we would be the light of the world uh, during this time for many. If you're interested in helping, please let us know. That way we make sure that uh, we have enough space there for you. And uh, again, that is the 22nd from 6 until 7. Also, we have a virtual uh Christmas Eve service on Christmas Eve, and that will go live at four o'clock. Now, if you're not able to watch it during that time, you can always engage with it after four o'clock. It will be up there, so uh, please do so. Part of that uh, service is going to be the children's program, but we also have the uh, communion and candlelight service Pastor Bill and I have been working on here. So if you would, please have elements bread and juice, as well as having candles ready so that you can partake uh, in those parts of the service. Thank you so much for gathering with us this morning, and I pray God's blessings upon you as we get together here. Uh, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, God of grace and mercy, we thank you so very much, and we ask that you would be with us right now. Wherever we find ourselves, Lord God, we know that you are bigger and greater than our own circumstances, and your love goes beyond all of our faults and all of our sins and, and all of the wrongs of the world. So I pray that we would find ourselves resting in your grace, resting in your love, having repented of those things that have separated us from you, and relying on you to lead us and guide us through these times. As we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. every day. We stand on the threshold between this world and the next one. We live and move between the ordinary and divine, between the mundane and the mystery. Too often we forget to look up and see the angels in our living room. We forget that the love we give and live is a sign of eternity. God with us right now. We forget that company is coming. Ruth tells us that God's favor came to a girl, an ordinary girl. It might have been you or your daughter. It might have been the girl down the street or your grandchild. But the messenger of God came and greeted her and said, The Lord is with you. What a gift and a promise. Emmanuel, God is with us. We light these candles with peace in our hearts for the promise of proximity, the nearness of God. Even when we forget to listen, to lean into that presence, God is as close as our own breath. This, in a confused and confusing world, 
is a peace that passes all understanding. It is the peace that knows that company is coming. Good morning once again, saints and sinners of Grace United Methodist Church here in Nashville and the larger community. The fourth Sunday of Advent is usually the time we remember the pronouncement of the birth of Jesus by the angel Gabriel to Mary, the still yet unwed but highly favored one of God. And since that is what we normally remember and, and uh, hear about here on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Let me read that passage to you from Luke today. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary... And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, 
the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord, and let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Like always, I pray that God's blessings be added to the reading and hearing and understanding of his holy word. You know, we, we live in a world <clears throat> that makes me wonder often if Jesus really matters anymore. Does Jesus matter to you? Let me, allow me to jump ahead a, a few years from this birth of, of Jesus. Jesus has now already impacted the world around him by loving the marginalized people. He had brought transformation to the lives of, of those that he healed, forgave, and, and those who became believers and disciples. The establishment had, had set out to destroy and discredit Jesus and, and eventually had him put to death by hanging him on a cross. Now, the argument went out from the enemies uh, of the, the, the early church that the Jesus movement was really of no value because Jesus wasn't important, Je because Jesus didn't matter. That's what they tried to establish. The argument went something like this. We've had a lot of, of charismatic teachers and preachers in Israel over the years Jesus is no different. None of them claimed that they would come back from the dead. Jesus didn't either. That, his enemies said, was a fiction created by his followers. They have, it was suggested, invented this Jesus is alive myth. But it's just that, a fiction. And Jesus is a fly-by-night, self-proclaimed, charismatic leader. He lived, he died, he's gone. He doesn't matter. See, that, that was the challenge that those first Christians faced in that first century. The enemies were trying to get rid of Christianity by getting rid of Jesus. And, and the members uh, of the Jesus' faith community who were convinced beyond the shadow of a doubt that he was alive and with them and, and leading them into the future, they began to look for ways to show that, that Jesus really does matter. And they wanted to take the starch out of their hateful neighbor's arguments when they did it. And we see the signs of this in this first chapter of, of the Gospel of Luke. Luke is looking for ways to con of, of convincing whoever will pay attention that, that Jesus does indeed matter. Nowadays, we are inclined to say that the arguments Luke used are not particularly convincing, but they may have been at, at the time that they were written. See, at the beginning of his gospel, Luke uses two arguments designed to convince his readers that Jesus truly does matter. The first argument is this. Luke tells us that Jesus is descended from David, the great king. And it was an argument aimed directly at the Jewish believers, at the Jewish church. And it's hard to tell whether this, this claim was designed more to convince the Christians or the Jews. It may have been Luke's way of saying, our claim to King David is better than your claim to King David. And Jesus is a direct descendant. It probably didn't convince Jews 
that may have impressed the, the first Christians. The second argument that Luke makes is this. Jesus' father was God the Almighty, not some human being. This sounds sensational to us, but it, it may not have been for those first Christians, for those who, who lived in that first century. See, the, the same claim was made for many great men in that era. Uh, Emperor Augustus Caesar was believed to have had a divine father. So was Alexander the Great. And often these stories arose after a famous man had died. In Jesus' case, we call this the virgin birth. It seems, it seems puzzling that Luke makes this claim for Jesus for two reasons. First, it, it made Jesus sound like any other famous man in the history of Greek and Rome. Second, it, it contradicts the argument also made by Luke that Jesus is a direct descendant of, of King David. See, the problem comes when we read the genealogy for, for Jesus that Luke includes in his gospel. The, the genealogy concludes that Jesus was a descendant from David through Joseph, not Mary. And, if, and so, if, if the virgin birth is true, then him being a descendant from David through Joe cannot be true. The opposite is also the case. Why did Luke include two contradictory claims for Jesus in this gospel? The best answer we can imagine is that this writer wants to make the argument any way he can that Jesus truly does matter. Perhaps Luke believed that if one argument didn't convince his readers, then the other one would. And it's pretty clear that, that the enemies of the faith community weren't convinced by either argument. Why does any of this matter to us on this fourth and final Sunday of Advent season and this year of 2020? Here's why it matters, because Christians have always been certain that when all is said and done, Jesus truly does matter for the faith community. All sorts of arguments have been used to try and prove this to be true, and none of these arguments are persuasive in and of themselves. But there's a reason the faith community has tried so hard to say and show that Jesus really does matter. And the reason is, it's true. Jesus matters more than we can say. How does he matter and why? Jesus matters because his life and his death and his abiding presence in our lives show us what God means for our lives. Without Jesus' life among us, we would be left wondering. So, given the life and death and an abiding presence of Jesus, what does God mean for us? What does God mean for us? Jesus shows us that in God we are loved with an impossibly generous love. There is nothing we can do to deserve it nor to pay for it. The one and only authentic response to that generosity is to love others, including our enemies. And such a response will, will transform our lives and begin to redeem the world. And when you stop and think about it, this is an astonishing Christmas gift to us. That's who Jesus was and is. And that's why and how Jesus matters. And as we approach the celebration of Jesus' birth, let us remember why the day and celebration matter. They matter for us because Jesus matters and always has and always will. Still, even though I said 
here today and I say that, I know that most folks want an explanation that they can understand or it just doesn't make sense to them. 2020 has been an odd year. I, I think we all would agree to that. But this I know, even, even through the oddness of, of what we've experienced over the last several weeks and months, I know this, that simple minds want simple answers to complicated questions. The human desire for an application of reason to a situation is what I'm referring to. Uh, the application of reason always seems to us to be the way through the, the murky unknown. And with all of the technological Technolo that's a big word for me, technological know-how, we want things put in undesirable categories or downsized into digestible bits of common wisdom. See, we hear Mary in, in the Scripture today and, and ourselves ask a question like, how can this be or, or why me? And it suggests that we expect some humanly understandable reason for an, an anticipated event or, or a strange occurrence, such as 2020. The question itself is understandable. It has been said that the longest distance one can travel is from the head to the heart. Probably, though, the reverse journey is, is harder from the heart to the head because it's all uphill, right? Very few of us have been exempt from death of a loved one or a close friend who has died unexpectedly. And when the news comes, we ask, how can this be? I was just with him uh, a few hours before he died or, or, or I was just with her uh, a couple days ago, when she appeared fine. See, it's hard to move from, from heart to head at such a time as that. The question does more than, than ask for a reason. The, the fact that it is being asked at all suggests that there are underlying uh, uh, recognition of some things in this world that just doesn't make rational sense and, and never will. For instance, you're, you're a small child and, and your mommy says, I, I love you. And, and you say, well, I don't understand this. How can this be? I just broke your favorite serving dish and you sent me to, your, to my room. How can you say you love me? See, there are some things in this life that defy reason. And, and the question of Mary to the angel typifies our human response. It is hope-seeking understanding, a heart being satisfied, and it may never reach the head. One way to approach an answer to Mary's question to the angel, and a good many of the deeper questions of our own lives, is to remember who the story is about. Again, remember I said that Jesus matters. Did you ever think about the fact that, that the story of your own life with all the experiences you have collected over time, that, that in each and every circumstance, including this one as you are sitting here today listening to me, the story is really not about you or me. Your purpose for being, your birth, your life, your loves, your traumas, your relationships, your memories, all are only secondary about you. I believe that, that in this story from the Bible, the story is about God and what God is doing and working through us to do. And that's exactly what we heard this morning from Luke's gospel. The story is not about Mary. It's not about the angels. 
It's about God the Father and the purposes of God the Son. And the reason we remember it better than the, the mundane stories of our own and, and our, our, or maybe others' lives, our own lives or maybe others' lives, is because of the spectacular response of Mary. I, there was a, a Bible student who wondered out loud one time, I wonder how many other stops Gabriel made that day before he found a young girl who would say yes. We'll never know if, if there is an answer to that question because the Bible is only interested in the question asked of Mary and, and her response or her answer. You're thinking, well, I thought this was about Mary, this, this passage that you read this morning. And, and hey, our, our culture leads us to believe that, that in our lives we are free agents who do all of, of the, our own choosing. But let me, let me share something this morning. Like Mary... We do not choose to be a part of God's work in history so much as we are chosen. Mary was taken by surprise to learn that God had a plan for her, one that that we know from this side of Jesus' death and resurrection was not without pain for this young mother. But why Mary? Why any of us? How can this be? In the end, we do not know why God chooses us. It is clearly not because we are special. In fact, when God chooses in, in the biblical stories, it is often in spite of some characteristic which the world might find disqualifying. Moses was guilty of murder. David was too young. Peter was a a simple fisherman. Paul had been a, a persecutor of the very one who called him. One thing we do know, and that is that God works in particulars. God does not choose us in general, but chooses us in the here and now. When we are chosen as Mary was chosen and we ask how can this be, we never get a very good answer. Do you realize that? You can ask that over and over, but we never get a really good answer. But then, again, let me remind you, it isn't our story. It's God's story. See, in the end, Mary wasn't chosen for her sake any more than you or I are are chosen for our own sakes. She was called to be a part of God's work of of saving people. God's blessings are still available to the world uh, through people who hear God's call and submit to it as Mary did. See, Jesus matters, and you better believe that. But let me say this today. Friends, you are chosen by God, and that is why you are here. And you're saying, well, how can this be? Well, we may wander together and never fully know in in this world, in this lifetime. But we will simply know that it is so. <clears throat> because God chooses whom God chooses to bring the good news alive in the world. <clears throat> Always know that God is up to something in the world. And those who carry the name of Christ are privileged to be a part of the task. And I always, <clears throat> I always remember what Steve Deneff said. When Mary said, 
as part of her reply to what Gabriel announced to her. She said, May it be unto me as you have said. Steve Dines says, I'm positive God's reply was, Oh, I will. You can be assured of that. May we also be assured today that when we answer the call of God's life upon our life and surrender to that will of God, that God will accomplish what God has set out to accomplish in us and through us. Jesus really does matter. Let me pray. Lord, for this reason, we are here today. And we know that we remember today how the, you sent an angel to Mary to announce the good news that she was chosen. She was chosen to be the mother of your son, Jesus the Christ. And, oh God, you have reminded us today just how important Jesus is to the world. Jesus matters in all things. And for us who are living in the world today in 2020 and have experienced all of this that has been so uh, upsetting and so grieving for us, uh, we, we know that Many people today are just so upset because, because they're, they're not really allowed to, to do what they want to do. God, remind us again that when you are present in our lives, that, that is what really is, is most important. And you are still looking for people that will carry the message of good news my prayer is that you will choose us that you will choose each and every one who listens to my voice today Lord to be that that very one who will carry the good news of Jesus Christ to a world that is longing to hear good news and I pray this in in the most precious and powerful name that I know, Jesus the Christ. Amen.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen.